is our top story this morning. A further 17 hostages who were held by Hamas were released yesterday. Amongst those released, Abigail Edan. She turned four on Friday. She's dual Israeli and US nationality. She was one of the hostages uh, in exchange for 39 Palestinian prisoners uh, from the Israeli side. Well, since Friday, a total of 58 hostages have been released by Hamas, mostly women and children, but also citizens from Russia, Thailand and the Philippines. Gazans have been using the pause and fighting to get desperately needed supplies of fuel, food and medicine. Well, Hamas says it's now seeking to extend the current four-day truce with Israel and increase the number of hostages released. That's a position that international leaders, including the United States, say they're supportive of. So I'm hopeful this is not the end. It's going to continue. But we don't know. And, uh, but I get a sense that um, all the players in the region, even the neighbors who aren't in, have been directly involved now, we're looking for a way to end this so the hostages are all released and Hamas is, is completely, uh, how can I say it, no longer in control of any portion of Gaza. However, Israel's prime minister has told the U.S. president his forces will resume their campaign with full force once the temporary truce ends. Well, meanwhile, uh, here in London yesterday, an estimated 100,000 demonstrators against anti-Semitism marched along Whitehall, protesting against the rise in hate crimes and anti-Semitism in the UK since the October the 7th attack in Israel. And amongst those were prominent journalists, entertainers and politicians, including the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who spoke to us. Uh, all doing here, and the only thing we're really doing is showing solidarity with Jewish people. And that's necessary because since October the 7th, I'm afraid there's been a very peculiar response in many parts of the world, including, I'm sad to say, in London. And uh, what we've seen is, uh, I'm afraid, the re-emergence of anti-Semitism and a failure to focus on the appalling terroristic acts of, of, of Hamas. OK, let's find out the latest now. Uh, we go to Tel Aviv. Freelance journalist Yotam Confino on that one uh, today. Yotam, how is the trading going? It's going uh, well, I would say, cautiously, meaning all three days have uh, gone, not smoothly, but all hostages that were um, promised by Hamas to be released have been released. In fact, more have been released. We saw people from Thailand and Russia also being released in, it, released in addition to the Israelis. And of course, Israel also lived up to its part of the deal, allowing humanitarian aid, some 200 trucks a day to enter Gaza. And they released 39 Palestinian prisoners every day. So we're entering some really crucial hours. This is the last day of the four-day truce. 11 Israeli hostages uh, remain on the list to be released. And another, uh, that would be 33. Uh, Palestinian prisoners are due to be released today and then both sides need to make a, a decision whether to extend the truce with 20, uh, 24 hours uh, per, per, per extension in return for uh, 13 hostages or if they will go back to, to fighting. Uh, this is what we're going to find out probably tonight. Well, I suppose Hamas will find out as soon as they run out of hostages, it will be back to, to fighting. So what's in it for them? So Hamas is, of course, doing everything it can now to get more breathing room for every hour that they get, where they can reorganize, they can gather strength, and they can get ready for the next round of fighting. That means a lot for Hamas. And of course, we also have to remember that all of the Palestinian prisoners who are released, they, they are seen as a PR uh, campaign for Hamas. We saw it yesterday, the, the images coming from Ramallah, we've seen it every single day. Hundreds of Hamas supporters chanting and, and just cheering for Hamas because they managed to, to free them. So there's a lot at stake for Hamas also. But again, we don't know how many hostages are alive. That's, of course, uh, a crucial detail for Israel to find out. Israel needs to know exactly how many hostages are alive. alive. And we also hear that some of the hostages are held by civilians. It's not even Hamas that holds them. So that's a huge chaotic uh, situation inside Gaza that Israel needs to figure out if it can accept to uh, continue negotiating, neg negotiating over.
Meanwhile, although there has been this pause, this this chance for, for Gaza to catch its breath, um, we hear from the World Health Organization that, that, that the Strip is on the brink of famine. Uh, and the idea that, that shelling could resume in those circumstances has got to focus minds, surely. Absolutely. But I think we have to take these warnings cautiously. We've heard for eight weeks now continuous uh, warnings about electricity running out in 24 hours, famine, outbreak of cholera. These warnings, they might be true, but they be, keep being repeated every single week for about eight, eight weeks now. So it's not to downplay the situation inside Gaza, but of course, the WHO would like for the situation to be resolved completely, a complete ceasefire, more than 200 trucks to enter every day. That's, that makes sense. But again, we have to remember uh, that these warnings, we need to follow up on these warnings. I remember talking endlessly about the 24-hour deadline for electricity uh, in Gaza from week one, and there is still electricity inside Gaza. Again, not to downplay the situation, but uh, what we're seeing now is, of course, not only is there a lot at stake for Israel and Hamas, there's even more at stake for the Palestinian civilians, because if and when Israel and Hamas go back to fighting each other, it will mean more misery, it will mean more deaths, it will mean more homes destroyed. And this time it will be in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, just sum up for us the, the mood in Israel. Obviously, there's so much joy uh, and has been over the weekend seeing families reunited, kind of emotional pictures that I, I've just really loved watching. But so much of it tinged with sadness. You know, we think about this little girl, Abigail, um, fronted a lot of the papers this morning, the Jewel National. Um, I think that's actually Emily Hans we're seeing there. But the little four-year-old girl, she turned four on Friday. Uh, both her parents were killed in a kibbutz. Her siblings were hiding in the cupboards when she was taken hostage. You know, joy that she's been released, but obviously the difficulty of, of patching someone back up together. Can you sum up the, the mood of the nation at the moment? And I know that's a very difficult question. I would say that uh, the sadness stems from, from a couple of different things. First of all, the fact that they were even in there to begin with. The second thing, the remaining hostages. It's not clear if they are going to make it out alive. And thirdly, what did these hostages go through? How were they treated? Which kind of uh, mental trauma have they lived? We have no idea. But when we saw what Hamas did on October 7th, which I'm not going to repeat now because it's pretty early in the morning, I do think that we should be extremely worried about at least some of these uh, hostages, what they have experienced for 50 days in Hamas captivity. And we're only going to find out once the families start talking about this. For now, they're protected. Their mental health is the first priority, but we will learn some of these stories. And I think most people are really worried about the damage uh, done to these uh, children. This four-year-old girl that you're mentioning, her parents were killed in front of her. Does she remember it? How was she treated in there? We have no idea. Yeah. Well, Jatum, uh, that mental health scenario is something that we're going to touch upon uh, later in the program and find out what medics are, are doing in relation to that. We appreciate your uh, summarization. Thank you very much indeed.